Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, Michael Fortner versus Jessica. You might argue like, oh, you're getting paid to make dumb videos and like the Roman Empire trend. What I want to know is what is the Roman Empire for you, for girls? Game? No way. way. The, the channel this month has made me just under 10 grand. It was a hard lesson to learn. Guy's 5'7". Does that guy stand a chance versus someone who's 5'3"? Whether or not AI is positive for content creators or negative for content creators. Biggest ick. Biggest ick? Yep. Oh. That's the timer. <laughs> never get it out. There's a gun on me. Holy that we're getting robbed. Because I was scared for my life. Literally, what was, was I thinking? If you would have died while you were hanging out with me, would you have haunted me? Welcome back to Anything and Everything. Anything and Everything. Anything. Anything and Everything. Like any... Anything. And live. everything. And everything. Today we have the host and the creator of the well-known popular YouTube channel Hanging Out, Michael Porter. Hey out. It's a game show on a slack line. If you ever seen Hot Ones, it's like Hot Ones, but instead of Hot Wings, it's with heights. I'm also a, a part-time ice cream wizard. I make ice cream in my free time. Oh, that's right. I forgot about that. Tell us a little bit about that because I haven't talked to you about it yet. Yeah, so the, the ice cream thing's amazing. A lot of people like freeze ice cream in giant freezers and then it gets transported all across the world. By the time it gets to you it's been like frozen melted frozen melted frozen melted and it's kind of like mediocre i would say but for the way that i make it is uh i pulled the nitrogen from the air hey everyone my name is michael get it really really cold into a liquid and then i pour that into the base of ice cream and then that's what i use to freeze it so all the nitrogen evaporates out so what you're left with is just pure ice cream that sounds intense that's... i learned it all at hogwarts i was there for eight years oh my god want to guess what my uh sign is what house i am okay tell me no you have to guess i have no idea i don't know harry potter like that to be honest with you well and that's uh that's sad we uh we're gonna have to probably watch something about harry potter or or do something about that because the fact that you don't even know one of them you don't even know one of the houses like 10 years ago i probably could tell you this information but uh, well then i won't tell you because it won't matter okay well now i really want to know it's okay i'm i was a ravenclaw gryffindor was what harry was slytherin was the bad guy gryffindor was the good guy and then ravenclaw and hufflepuff were like the side one. yeah so make ice cream and i was the game show i love that okay so we just got a little bit of harry potter education over here <laughs> okay so how did we meet do you remember how we met i do believe i joined creator now which is the thing eric made it's amazing if you're a creator you should absolutely join it quick little plug to that i was looking for people for my show i was looking for people for hanging out um i was scrolling through and i think i was reaching out to everyone who had like over a certain amount of followers or whatever. Sent a little message to see if you'd be interested in. But then you came out and we got you on. I was local too. Yeah, you had to be a local LA creator. Beautiful out there actually, because I haven't really been out to like Malibu or Calabasas, like really, until like I was invited out and to see like the rocks and like just the open air from like the city was like beautiful. A breathtaking place to kind of like take a step back from the city and like be able to get some nature. The word I use whenever I go up there is it's rejuvenating. You know, you, we live in LA and it's just, everything is like contained. Every single inch is filled with something. And so when you go up into the mountains or just out of nature, you get a chance to like relax. There's too much going on in the city. So it's rejuvenating to go up, up in the mountains and then to the ocean too. We like to, I like to hop into the ocean over by Malibu Pier. Yeah. That's where all the people surf. So I go down there and hang out there before we go into the mountains and then go on up and do some slack like. I have to say, the first time I came out and I did it, I put my life in your hands. I was yeah. absolutely terrified. Look at these hands. I know. Are, these are good hands though. Yes. I will keep you safe. I was in good hands. I do have to say that I remember being on the line and looking down the line at you like, I swear to God, if I die, just you know that I went on a link for this because, because I was scared for my life. I was so scared that my mouth went dry immediately. I remember posting like in the group chat, you go down to like the waterfalls and stuff. Have you been doing that? Just, I love waterfalls. There's a couple of waterfalls around us because we have so many mountains. And so I'm always on the hunt for waterfalls. I have a list in my phone of all the cool spots that I found while living here. I've been here for four years. And some of the spots are obviously waterfalls. I just went to one last week, a super popular one called Eaton Falls. Uh, it's 30 minutes from downtown LA, fantastic hike, easy to go to and when you get to the end there's a nice beautiful waterfall that you can go right up under and like when i went there was these group, the group of guys that were going under the waterfall and just screaming like they were trying to go super saiyan from goku which was kind of like killing the vibe of the yeah. of the like chill but you know it was fun to watch them like it was entertaining so right. eaton falls if you live in la if you want to go check it out there's a couple others around here but that's the closest one luckily for that uh nobody nobody had to put their lives in anybody's hands although i would have had them if, if, if that had to happen if you would have died while you were hanging out with me. <laughs> would you have haunted me? Never. No. Never? No, because I took those steps myself yep. to go out on that line. So mm -hmm. it was more of like, I took that risk. Yeah. But high risk, high reward. Yeah. yeah. That's why I like the show. 
is because of what you just said where like i invited you out and i offered it and i provided you the ability to do it but like at the end of the day you're the one that walked it you can lead a horse to water but you can't make a drink and like that's the coolest thing is seeing people do this thing that they're so scared of doing and like like you said like you're the one that took the steps i didn't do it i mean i was right. there for you as right. much as i could be but like you were the one who had to walk out you know mm -hmm. and so that's my favorite part of the the game show it's like an adrenaline thing okay so the fans want to know adrenaline. do you consider yourself someone who likes adrenaline stuff like a driven junkie i don't like the word junkie because junkie has a negative connotation true, true. um but i absolutely love adrenaline it's the best it's the, my favorite high you know, it's all natural and it's legal. The legal yeah. natural high. Absolutely love adrenaline. But I like the adrenaline in like controlled environments. Okay. It feels like you're gonna die, but you're not gonna die. And even for me, every time I go out there, I, I get scared. I get an adrenaline high. Yeah. And that's why I love it. I think yeah. as soon as I stop getting the adrenaline from it, I'm probably gonna stop doing it, which is sad. Good. But I've been doing it for 10 years and it's still scary every time. Yeah. So hopefully it stays like that for another 10 years. Right, and then you'll find something else probably. Yeah, I don't think I'll ever stop, but I definitely have already started to wean back off of doing the show because it's just exhausting. Yeah, I can imagine. Uh, it's, it's a lot of work. It's awesome to get people out there and experiencing it. You know, I get to provide people a lifetime, once in a lifetime experience. Yeah. But it is, at the end of the day, like, it is exhausting to do. I've been doing the show for years. What sparked your inspiration to make this like, kind of show? The inspiration behind the show is actually COVID. Can we say that? Yeah, for sure. At the time, I was filming... Uh, for a, a different YouTube channel called Reckless Ben. Fantastic channel. If anyone's watching, I highly recommend checking it out. Be warned though, you will go down a rabbit hole and yeah. you'll find yourself watching the content for 10, 12 hours. I agree, I definitely did. I was uh, working on that channel at the time, fully involved and then COVID hit, you know, back when everyone was like scared. Where they're like, oh my God, we're all gonna die. This is bad, this is the next like plague, bubonic plague. We kept filming through it and we got a, uh, a good amount of flack, the most hate that I had gotten from like an audience at the time. Cause like that was our livelihood. We couldn't stop. We had to keep going because that's how we were making money to live and pay rent. So it's right. like, I know it's not what you're supposed to do and everyone's telling us not to do it, but like, what are, is our other option? We, we didn't have unemployment. We kept filming. And yeah. at the time I was already bringing people up on the slack line, you know, right. like I've been doing it well before COVID and I was already bringing people up. So I thought like, let's just focus on this. You know, this is the, I found the thing I love. I love showing this thing to other people. So how do I make this thing the best possible experience for someone for their first time? And that's when I introduced a, a line above them. So that way now beginners can like walk out yeah. and actually use it, you know? Because when you were out there, you were like gr death grip in that. Yeah, thing, but wasn't you know? for that line, there's death no way I would have been able to even like stand. There's yeah, no way. that's the thing is no one can stand yeah. their first time. Even people who have been slacklining for a year or years, it's just yeah. a different beast up there. I started off as an interview show. I did 20 episodes, season one interview show and uh, it didn't take off. So I was like, okay, what am I going to do now? I modified it and switched it to a game show because who doesn't want to be a game show host? Right, we love games. I love true. games. Games are infinite. They've been around since the dawn of time. It's how people interact and it's uh everyone was game show hosts so i'm like well let's try this you know i like games switch to game shows it finally started getting traction but that took like six months yeah uh, it was like if you look at the chart or the analytics of the performance of the channel mm -hmm. the first six months four or five months is just flat line dead and then it starts spiking yeah that's how i started my youtube channel was through COVID. i just was like at home and i was like what i want to do i love music yeah. but copyright came in place i didn't really make a whole lot of money speaking so. of money yeah and reaction channels or just channels in general and on money. What's your thoughts on the TikTok creativity program, the beta one? I haven't used it. I don't use TikTok that often. Do you? Are you like using it? So I'm in season 10 now of the show and season 10, all, every single video is 61 seconds on TikTok. The beta program pays users who post videos that are over 60 seconds. And what I'm seeing, at least for right now, is that on YouTube, yeah. your videos get 10 cents per thousand. Dollar and 30 cents? 10, 10 cents? On YouTube Shorts, you get 10 cents per thousand. On TikTok, you get a dollar and 20 cents oh, wow. per thousand, which is a, which is an order of magnitude higher. So it's over a thousand percent more. It means if you get a million views on, on TikTok, you're getting a thousand dollars. So it's like, yeah, I switched yeah. over to it yeah. and it's been the best thing ever. Like me personally, the, the channel this month has made me just under 10 grand. Wow. Which is Great. fantastic. It's fantastic. Yeah. It's interesting that TikTok is doing that. A platform known for short form content is promoting longer form videos over 60 seconds. And YouTube Shorts doesn't even do that. Right. Like you can't post vertical videos that are uh, it's over 60 seconds on YouTube. And it also depends what kind of content you made. Like for the first nine seasons that I did it for, which is about two years, I was doing videos that I was targeting 30 seconds. So now all of my videos I target to be over a minute because like one, it's more worth my while. Because if a video gets 10 million on YouTube Shorts, I get $100. So it's like versus a million on TikTok, you know, it's 
it's a thousand dollars. So now I'm like, I've changed up my like targeting for the videos. And also I've changed up the format. So it's a lot more fun now. I always try to try to keep things changing, but the, the beta program, I highly recommend. I, I like it a lot. Otherwise you're not really going to make money unless you're doing brand deals. Yeah. I just recently went down the tunnel of learning how to reach out and write emails. And then currently on that right now, I'm trying to get emails to sponsor this video. So maybe this video will be sponsored when I actually hear oh, yeah. Um, I have a couple ideas of who would like to sponsor this video. Would you like to sponsor this? Wait, well, I can't tell you yet because I don't give away one of our games. Since oh, you did games. mention that you love to play games, we're going to play a couple yeah. games here today. But you're going to have to show me this TikTok thing because I really want to get on it. For the TikTok creativity program, the beta one, you just go to the three little lines and you can scroll down to it and apply. There's certain okay. requirements that you have to meet before right. you can do it. Okay. I don't know what those are, but eventually you keep posting. And if you post good content, people watch it. The algorithm is the best at showing good videos. So eventually it will happen. Yeah. And then you can apply for it, but it's it's worth it. It's well yeah. Worth it. Hell yeah. I mean, especially uh, if it's so lucrative. It's a thousand percent more beneficial in YouTube shorts, which is a lot of percentage. Yeah. It's a lot of percentage. Do you know that on YouTube, anything that consists of content creation topic wise has the highest paying rate? An RPM is yeah. revenue I per thousand. Like for rate. I meant. Yeah. yeah. I've changed the marketing of the game show from entertainment and comedy to educational. I think educational has higher RPMs. This is what they talk about in creating yeah. how I've yeah. heard it from other sources. Okay. And so I kind of shifted it more from like comedy and entertainment to educational. Okay. And so now all my, I tag like hashtag education. I'm doing trivia, you know? Okay. And it's yeah. it's places like capitals of countries and locations and like you would learn it in high school or college. I'm trying to make it more like an educational game show, okay. educational tribute show because it, it pays more and also like people like to learn. In school, you learn that learning is boring. Yeah. Not boring, bad at making learning fun. Right. And, and learning, I think, is inherently fun. Make that a thing. You know, learning should be fun. You should always keep learning. You shouldn't, like, graduate and stop. Right. And I think they take that away from us. But the beta program to wrap it up is, is fantastic. And I, it's uh, only beta right now, so I don't know. If you're confused what RPM means, it's how much money you make per 1,000 views on your video. YouTube Shorts is 10 cents. TikToks, depending on what you do, it's 50 cents to $1.50. And then Snapchat is ten dollars ten cents a dollar ten dollars like it's like I, I do feel insulted in a way getting paid ten cents per thousand people you might argue like oh you're getting paid to make dumb videos i don't think they're dumb snapchat is so hard for me to use it always yeah. glitches I, I log out and i lose things i just i don't it's not user friendly like i said for me and same thing with tiktok but for me youtube storage just seems so much easier to use so i do have a, another question for you what challenges have you had leading up to like the success of your youtube channel that you faced like so maybe good. like losing footage or a camera. Oh my God. Yes. Countless, countless. Uh, what about those people who came up on the on the rocks that one day and were trying to shut us all down? I've had yeah. countless challenges during the, during the channel. So the first one, yeah. when I was doing season one, right at the start of COVID, I had filmed four episodes. This is when it was an interview show. I filmed four episodes and I was editing it and I had uploaded like first drafts online to YouTube. And then my hard drive fell off of the table and got corrupted. And it was a mechanical corruption, which means you have to send it in. When I started the show, there was nothing but challenges. It was just challenge and fail and challenge and fail. And the, the corruption of a hard drive is like terrible. You lose everything and it's like devastating. You know, you just want to quit. I, it was during COVID. So like, what am I going to do? Just sit there on my couch and just be sad. I have nothing else to do, but just like keep going. Luckily I didn't quit because now it's like my favorite thing to do, right. but a corruption of an external hard drive was the worst thing. And so that's the cool thing about challenges is you get punched and then you just keep going with it. You learn from it. But I don't ever keep footage. I just delete it after it's posted. And if I ever need to go back and clip something, I'll just screen record it. For, like it might not be the best quality, but as I go on through time as a content creator, I start to get better and I can't even look at it the stuff yeah. like I don't even care I don't keep stuff I delete it to be honest there's with definitely videos I wouldn't mind being erased yeah not because I said like bad things just because it's like oh cringe like what was I thinking literally what was I thinking I thought that was good oh, <laughs> silly me yeah I look back at my videos and I'm kind of literally the most cringe it's just the worst it's so hard to watch oh my god we all go through it you know yeah. we all do it and so it's just part of the process what was like one like near death experience is you're like a risk taker and you do a lot of high risky things what was like something that was like so close to death. Interesting. I've had one near-death experience. The reason it was the scariest moment of my life is because I had absolutely no control. And what it was is I had went back home to Ohio visiting a friend. We were hanging out at his house, you know, just kind of catching up, having a good time. It was like 2 a.m. and he gets up to go into his room and I hear him yell. And as soon as I heard him yell, I knew immediately, holy shit, we're getting robbed. Oh. Immediately. I knew before his yell was done. I was like, we're getting robbed. I got on the ground 
and put my hands behind my my head. And then sure enough, two dudes in masks come in, kick that open the door on me, and then one on his girlfriend, and then another two other people in the room. I'm on the ground, my friends are starting to panic, and I'm like, yo, chill, 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 take whatever you want, guys, take whatever you want. It's his house. His house, oh my gosh. His house. The reason I like highlighting is because it is like an intense situation to be in, and so like, you have to stay focused on, on walking, stay focused under this like dire situation, which is like falling, which is like death. So luckily I didn't like, panic i was able to like stay calm talk to my friends and not panic and then tell my other friend like yo they won like they're here for a reason let them do their thing like i'm not trying to die over nothing yeah. there's a gun on me I'm, the, I'm a stereotypical white guy yeah. and the dudes in masks were not fans of like stereotypical white guys and there was in the news just a week prior about the robbery got wrong and people died i'm like mm -hmm. thinking in my head while this is going on this is exactly what i just heard about days ago. I'm like, I'm not trying to die. And if they wanted to kill me, I was dead. There's nothing I could have done. So nothing to do with slack landing, nothing to do with the driving. And the reason it was the scariest is because there was absolutely no control in my hand. I had right. a way to defend myself. Oh, that's the worst. I'm so sorry to hear that, but I'm glad you're here with us today. Crazy. It felt like the closest to death because there was zero control whatsoever. Yeah, that's really scary. But in terms of like participating on the line, I don't ever do it without a harness. There are people that do it. <laughs> And everyone who does it has a reason. I still have a reason to do it right now. I'm always super safe up there. I'm always super safe with anyone that comes up there because it's right. my job. I'm not trying to have any injuries. And I've done 125 episodes, 125 people in the show, and there's never been a single injury. Yeah. And my plan is to go a thousand with no injury. I actually did have an experience where I was faced with death as well. A couple of them. Couple? Did I, oh, yeah. One. Did, did I tell you about the mass shooting when I was in? You were in a mass shooting? Yeah, I didn't tell you about it. What's with all these guns? You know, it's scary. I you should leave the country. I was headed to the airport. Um, I was going to New York for a remodeling competition. I was walking through the airport. A guy came in and he just started shooting people. It's that moment when like, you don't know if you're gonna survive. You don't know if the person next to you is gonna shoot you or what, how many shooters or what. And then you send that text message to the family like, it could be the last one. And I'll never forget this moment. And it brings chills to my spine talking about it because I was following my dreams. And I was like, if I die, it was because I was following my dream. So the last message that I thought I was sending, because I thought it could have been my last message. If there's one thing I could leave behind, it's follow your dreams because that's what I was doing. I ended up going to that competition. I made it and I ended up winning the competition. Yeah. yeah challenges, dude. You always come out yeah. better. That was only one, right? Is the, the mass shooting. Yeah. Well, I'm glad that they missed you. They won the tournament. Yeah. Or contest or what yeah, is, that was a modeling competition. Modeling competition, yeah. It was insane. It was in New York City. I made it like 1 a.m. Then I had a 9 a.m. call in. After that happened, were you telling everyone possible or did you keep it to yourself? I kept it to myself. My director, aren't you the girl from Fort Lauderdale? And I'm like, yeah. And he goes, did you fly on Fort Lauderdale yesterday? He's like, I'm so glad you're alive. How do, were you there? And I was like, yeah, um, I made it. And I was going to do the competition and nothing was going to stop me. I'd done so much work to be there. I wasn't going to just give it up. Everyone was like, don't go. This is the sign. Maybe you shouldn't go. And I was like, no. Yeah. Like, if I die, I'm going to die and try to get out of here. I don't want to yeah. die. I'll tell you that. But it's a good move that you were like, you still found a way to do it yeah. and still like made it happen which is uh what success looks like right finding ways to make things happen exactly and that uh, takes that's interesting because like uh -huh. i have an actual fear now that i'm 27 yeah so i'm gonna get the 27 club tell us about that yeah. i've been joking about the 27 club and for those of you that don't know what the 27 club is there's a lot of like famous people and rock stars who people have been living these crazy lives they tragically die at 27 for example mac miller uh, i'm not anywhere near on the same level as mac miller however it's got me spooked you know yeah I, I, i've been joking like i'm gonna go out this year in the past under seat of a car and hopefully no one can clip this clip next to me oh my gosh like, here i am actually worried about there's a reason that there's a, there's myths and legends and things and yeah. uh who knows i'm kind of joking but also like i'm on edge this year Watch i'm watching my back i'm wearing seat belts i'm driving safe but my birthday was august 13th so you still have almost a whole year of time yeah. dude i have so long to go oh my gosh have you heard of machine gun kelly's 27 coffee club no he's a coffee club dedicated to to the 27 club really yeah but me and him both are in our 30s so we made it we pass. made it past yeah. Do you have any tips on surviving 27? Mm. Uh, give me all of them. I need them. You know what? I think I was, I was like, this was like COVID, pre-COVID. Oh, you got lucky. <laughs> yeah, I pretty much did. I think I was like just going into COVID at 27. So but, uh, keep an eye on you. I'll check in on you. Make sure you're all right. Okay, so we both have worked with Eric before. And Love that guy, Eric. Yes. Guy. Eric Decker, you met him from the Couch series. Tell us a little bit about that. That's when I was uh, working on the channel with the Reckless Band. Throwback, honestly. The Couch series was so, some so long ago. I'm a different person now. It's different times he reached out to us because we were doing a series that he was a big fan of me and ben we were doing a series where we're able to acquire a banksy painting artist in the uk anonymous that's one of the things that makes him really really popular he's anonymous and people don't know who he is so we were able to get one of his paintings and we were using that we were trying to sell that 
for as much money as possible. We were trying to like, the, the point of the whole series was to figure out like, what is art? What makes art valuable? He was a really big fan, watched it, reached out to us because he had the idea of buying the couch from Logan Paul. But the issue was, was at the time they had some beef and so we needed to sneak him in. That's our specialty is being undercover and sneaking sneaking people into things. So he reached out, came to our house and told us the plan, loved the plan, wanted to help him out, asked me to be this guy, Clint Roberts. Clint Roberts' job was to buy, sell, and trade um, exotic furniture. So that was that was my job. That was a character I had to pose at. Put up to Logan's in a U-Haul to talk with them to get the U-Haul in so that that way we could lift the truck lid up and Eric could be like, yo, I'm here to buy the couch because yes. they wouldn't let him in because there was beef. So we had to sneak him in. So we got him in. Yeah. And so the, the craziest part about this, that story, not only did he get the couch, which was insane. I drove him to the airport to fly back home right at the start of COVID when everything started locking down. His girlfriend had bought him the last flight out of LAX back home to Georgia. When he flew out, that was the last flight that flew out of LAX and then everything shut down. I remember, which was awesome, we were both talking and he slacklines. Mm. And so I was like, dude, when you come back out, like we gotta get you on the line. He's like, I wanna go on, I wanna go on so bad. I'm like, dude, we'll get you on eventually. We finally get him on and that was actually like the start of a snowball effect that for me, that got other people on. So like, Man. he rented out the set and my services to rig the line, use the high line in his video and then other creators started reaching out and paying me and that money is actually what brought me out of like, like crazy poverty. Like I, I was just in a survival state for so long. His video is what helped me get out of that and actually get money to like, like I've snowballed now into more and more and more. So it was fantastic. And he used it because of a Mr. Beast video that was shot with my roommate. It was, it was cool because like we helped him out back then and then he helped me out years later and it's just like, it's so, good. It's so awesome. Love it's that. so awesome. And now he's killing it. Absolutely crushing it. Yeah. Which is even, even cooler. It took years to finally get him back on, to finally get him on the Highland, which it happened, which was awesome. But then the really funny thing was, was that we filmed for his video, wrapped it up and then filmed for mine for the game show. So posted the videos. At that time, I was still reading the comments. Don't like to do very much now. I kind of just read my community section posts. The comments were like, oh, he stole this idea from Arak. I've been doing it for a year. Like, yeah. I, and there's no stealing going on. They're ignorant. Yeah. Definition of ignorant is they, they don't know, they don't know any of it. They have it, they're not educated on it. You see the surface level and then make your comments. And so it doesn't bother me. Why would it bother me? It's just, right. it's like your opinion is an uneducated one and ignorant ones. Comments from ignorant people are the same as a vote from a bot. They don't matter. Now I just don't really, I try not to read the comments. There's there's just too many. You know? right. There's just like, like thousands of comments. I like to respond to most of my comments as much as I can. Sometimes I, I ignore the ignorant ones, but. Yeah. Okay, so Logan Paul's couch. I actually got to Crazy see this series. couch and sit on it. It's yeah. now sitting in Eric's new studio. Amazing, I'm glad he, he, it's good that he got it back. He's like, it's a part <laughs> of his story. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and it's at least it's sitting in like the studio. So it's like, people who come in that are like guests can see it and like yeah, of course. have that experience with it. Yeah, I still, have a, I still have a pillow from it. God left it in my house yeah. and I didn't have a pillow for like a year. And so we, we did the series of stored at our house for a while. The pillow got left. I'm like, cool, I can pillow now. Mm -hmm. But I will say the worst pillow. It's super <laughs> uncomfortable. It causes your face to itch. Like Mercedes does not make good couches. They make good cars, but yeah. their pillows not, do not recommend. I think it's just for looks is probably what it is. Yeah, definitely, was... definitely not for comfort. Yeah. Okay, so speaking of Logan Paul, one thing that really bothers me is when people call Logan Jake okay. and they don't know the difference. Do you know it the difference? You? It does. Why does that bother you? Because I know the difference and I think I was in Hollywood when they were living across the street mm -hmm. and I was always at the W and I also I was the one that let Jake up this all of Team Ten up the elevator to sneak in to surprise um Logan. It's like one episode that they did or whatever, one vlog. Knew the difference between the two of them. So now whenever someone calls Jake Logan or Logan Jake, it just kind of annoys me. But they're like two really big YouTubers I feel like in the space that if you watch YouTube, it's like, how can you be commenting on YouTube and or making YouTube videos? Like people like making YouTube videos and talking about the two and getting them mixed up and it kind of bothers me. But you would be able to tell the difference between the two of them, right? I've met Logan and I've met Jake. We're gonna play a game in a little bit and we're gonna see you can tell the difference between the two of them. Yeah, I absolutely will. Okay, cool. It would be hard not to. I'll say this though actually about Jake. I love Jake. The only thing I don't love is that <laughs> lost me money. Oh, no. To my friends, people like complain about him. I believed in him and I'm like, dude, how can you hate him? He's from Ohio. I'm from Ohio. I'm from Cincinnati. They're from Cleveland. Like Ohio boys stick together. I put my money where my mouth was when I barely had money. Like I was betting on their fights. Bet ever on boxing. Mm -hmm. And I bet on almost all of Jake's fights. And the fight against Tommy Fury is when I was like, dude, I'm going to put a lot of that on this one. Kind of have some money now. I'm going to bet a thousand dollars. Round two comes around and I'm like, 
dude, I lost my money. But it's a train wreck. It's like a train wreck watching. I'm like, yeah, I have to watch it. Like, it's you, fighting. You got money on it. Yeah, but it's fighting. Like, the great thing about fighting, because I used to wrestle. I did years of wrestling. I have a black belt, third degree black belt, and more mixed martial arts, specifically Taekwondo. And I've done a boxing fight too. And so the thing about fighting is it only takes one hit. And so I'm like hoping, but uh, they're both great boxers. So like, obviously you watch the fight, you know what happened and, and Jake did not win the Tommy yeah. Fury fight. And I lost a thousand dollars. I haven't bet again. When we got that Logan Paul, Dylan Dennis fight coming up, I looked at the odds. I wanted to bet on Logan. Yeah. If you bet a thousand dollars, you win 200. It's just, this is not worth it. Oh, it's not no. worth the, the yeah. risk reward to me oh, isn't, yeah. isn't high enough. So I'm going to be betting on it. Yeah. Probably said Logan would. Okay. But Jake lost me a thousand dollars. It's only fair because we did break into his house and cost him probably money too. <laughs> Which is a whole another story around the couches. We, we broke into his house to oh. steal the couch that he stole from our friend Corey Fung. There's again part of the Reckless Ben channel. Okay. We, uh, we hired a whole team of jujitsu black belts as our bodyguards. <laughs> we got into the house in the back of a U Haul. Oh my goodness. Lifted up the U Haul, weighed out the couch. Bought, got one of the couches, threw it in, and then like was going around his house trying to find the other one. Eventually found it, and uh, it was while he was shooting the music video for like 27 or 24, 26, or whatever the music video was. That was a whole ordeal. They like, I'm not gonna get into it. It was wild. You can watch a video and, and see for yourself. That's the brief interaction I had. So he probably doesn't even like me, if he ever remembered. <laughs> if he remembered. He probably doesn't like Ben, even if he remembered. Yeah, I've had a couple interactions and I, I just don't know if he did remember as yeah. well. But speaking of Jake Paul and sports betting, he now has this better thing that he does at sports betting. Have you heard of it? Of course. I think it's very, very interesting. I, I use it as inspiration for an app that I'm making. Okay. And I like I'm that. turning the show into a mobile game and he's yeah. focusing on the micro betting, which yeah. is that like really fast stuff. Right. And so for mine, I'm doing like really, really fast. Like, games i'm very aware of that yeah it's kind of kind of cool cool yeah i was watching the youtube channel yesterday his channel he posted a video yesterday of the better warehouse in miami in miami oh, nice. so he did like the whole right mtv here. like cribs yeah. show but the place it looks really good they did it sure. really, really nice it's inspiring to like build studios sets and they have like a whole like uh team with computers doing the the app stuff like the mm -hmm. live app stuff so it's pretty cool he definitely has a whole bunch of stuff going do you gamble do you, do you, I I can't do online sports betting. Not sports betting. I used to like for like the Miami Heat when I lived in Miami because I could tell you by the way beginning of the game how it was going to end, and yeah. I was always always right. I was watching every game. Yeah. But now I haven't been watching sports because I don't work in a sports bar anymore. I don't bet on sports. I do gamble like in the casino. Yeah. Like live tables, blackjack, bocker, bocker. Yeah. Game. That was one direction I considered with the show when I was like. Season five, season six. Yeah. Was, I've been trying to get sponsors for a while. I've, I've now given up on it and I'm sponsoring it myself. There's like certain industries and fields that have a bunch of money. OnlyFans is one of them. And another one is gambling. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, mm, interesting. Like what if I made a, a trivia based gambling game? Given the, the resources or the funds, uh, I think I could make, make a good one. But I don't know how I feel about pursuing that right now. Cause like yeah. I'm trying to make the show as family friendly as possible and True. gambling does obviously result in like bad things you know like addiction people get addicted to it for sports betting you know just bet on what you know and i know fighting the best and it's the easiest there's right. two people one v one and in basketball or football you know it's a whole team and coaches and injuries can happen and versus another team you know so it's it's a lot more complicated i, I try to keep it simple just just betting on fighting and i only did it on ones that i was like confident would win and i was so confident jake would win <laughs> and then tommy fury and that was why i liked watching it because i know he was sure he would win and then even the aftermath you know like the loss was just as entertaining to watch as the fight right and you learn a lot and challenges you know like in defeat you learn a lot and i think it probably made him better mm -hmm. uh, i've definitely gotten my ass kicked so taught me a lot okay cool how often do you think about the egyptian pyramid if i have that correct think what you're talking about is rope guys think about all the time okay and uh for me because i have a trivia show i think about it all the time okay the egyptian pyramids i think about very often in depth by this guy graham hancock and for those of you who don't know who Graham Hancock is, he has a documentary online on Netflix called Ancient Apocalypse. Um, and basically what that whole documentary talks about is the myths and stories and legends of like old religions. Human civilization uh, kind of came to be after and even before the Great Flood. So the Great Flood, we got hit by a comet and it froze, it melted the ice caps up north, causing like a huge flood. We got hit like twice. The pyramids was uh, something they built in order to like commemorate certain periods and times what the Egyptians believed your soul would go around when it died. So it would rise, go make this long ass cosmic journey and come back to go back into another being. And I also think about the Roman civilization a lot. Specifically, there's this dude that 
If you ask your boyfriends about, they'll probably know him. His name's Marcus Aurelius. Okay. That's the thing if you want to continue on with like the, the Roman Empire trend to see like, ask them about this guy. And if they know them, then they really know about the Roman How, Empire. So far off. They're close. <laughs> oh, no, right? Egypt, Egypt is close to okay, them. Okay. No, it's just across the Mediterranean Sea. Okay. But I think about it more. I wouldn't say more than I should, but I think about it a lot. Why is that? Why is this such a trend? It's a good question. Why is it a trend? <laughs> yeah. I think it's because the Roman Empire lasted for so long and it was one of the like greatest civilizations in the past 10,000 years. You know, it reigned for over 2,000, which is 20, 25% of the time. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot to be learned from it. This way of thinking called Stoicism, I believe it came out of the Roman Empire and it's, it's really helpful for guys that control like to deal with their emotions. Okay. And so that's probably one of the big reasons why guys think about it all the time. You know, yeah. there's like military leaders, this thing, Stoicism that came out of it, you know, they have a bunch of like their religion came out of it uh greek greek mythology that's something i i love greek mythology i've always always liked it so they just had aussie things come out of it but yeah we think about it a lot what i want to know is what is the roman empire to to for you for girls right so what's the thing that y'all think about a little bit too much or maybe way too much yes. that, that would surprise me um i think more about art thank you for teaching me a little something i didn't know because i don't know anything about that yeah spend so much time thinking about it, I know a lot. But also my job is to know like trivia and facts, and just like things. And so the mythology one I use a lot. Okay. But okay. art and colors, what, what yeah. happens if you mix red with blue? What do you get? Purple. What happens if you mix purple with green? Brown. What happens if you mix yellow with? Yellow with blue, green. Yeah, I wouldn't know any of that. Color is not my thing. <laughs> I, I loved art. Art was like my, my biggest thing. I went to art college, so. Oh, so yeah. I learned all about colors, contrast, weight, balance, light. I can see that really being a thing, especially like for Instagram, right? When you post pictures, you everyone like edits with the saturation of the colors. I can see girls singing about colors more than like white eyes. Yeah, because yeah. that's something I'm really bad at was like color grading, dealing with colors and editing. I just kind of got good at it. Play a little bit with the highlights. Like I finally kind of figured it out to make it look good, but it took me so long. Yeah, you know what I think it is is that women are a little bit more emotional. We're attached to our emotions, yeah. and I think colors um, bring emotion, um, make you feel some type of way. Yeah. The colors are known to be, they give you feelings and, and to express emotions. Yeah, or even think about it more. So you, yeah. women think about colors and we think about the Roman Empire. Yeah, it's true. Interesting is right. Maybe I'll switch it up. I mean, I'll go home and I'll look into colors. What color should I look into? Do you have a oh, color that you recommend? Uh, so pink has always been a comforting color and I like it girly, but I just recently tapped into purple and yellow. Yellow is one thing that I think yellow is very bright, very welcoming. Um, but colors all have meanings. They all yeah. give feelings. So, oh no, I guess. Do you know what the yellow rose represents? Friendship. Yeah. 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 Red means love and yellow means friendship. And, then, and white means true. Oh, loss. Oh, okay. Oh yeah. True. Purity. Yeah. I, I thought think... usually you bring like white roses to like, I guess for a pure start, if like you've lost someone. I could yeah. see that. A, a fresh new beginning. The one that I thought was kind of cool was um, a blue rose. Oh. Yeah. To know what a blue oh, rose means. No, but I did once give a blue rose to, to someone. Yeah. Why did you give it to him? But I bought blue rose because blue is like usually a man color. And to me, I just was like, wow, that's kind of manly. Me. To give a man a rose is like a red would have been too romantic, I think. Yeah, especially if it was like a blue. Yeah, a blind date. Yeah, blind date. Yeah, red yeah, right would be a little. Yeah, so I think blue was just kind of more just like. Well, it's good. It's cool. It, it stands out. So yeah. I would, I mean, dude, I wish I got more roses. Any color. I'll take any color roses. Okay. Okay. I love roses. I, I uh, wake up in the mornings and the first thing I do is I go outside to try to get some sunlight but I go for a walk around my neighborhood yeah I walk up the hill to where the nice houses are mm -hmm. and they have rose bushes kind of like out on the path so I literally wake up to go walk and I smell the roses it sounds kind of weird yes. maybe Wonderful. whatever but it's like I highly recommend it it's nice you know get some sunlight get some energy going and then I never really did it while I was living in the car, while I was homeless, you know, I was too busy trying to survive. So now that I have the time to do it, like I take advantage. Sounds therapeutic. The blue rose. Yep. It's supposed to mean like mystery or like the unobtainability because no blue ra roses occur in nature, naturally. Oh, thanks for that. Yeah. We didn't know that. The fun facts are today. They're, they're all getting dropped. For sure. So then Some yellow, I'll look in it. Well, yellow is the color I use for the show. Yeah. Oh, you do? Color. Oh, that's right. Yellow. Oh my gosh. I yeah. didn't even think about how we're... Do you mind if I use yellow? <laughs> oh, I just I thought about that. Oh my gosh. A good color. That's so funny. You do use yellow as well. Oh my yeah. God. That's the whole like color scheme of the, the show. When I was trying to figure out the show, you know, branding's important. I'm putting... Yeah. I was relatively new to it and I still kind of am, but I knew like I had to pick a color scheme. Yeah. And so I'm like, well, yellow and black seems to work well with text. Oh my gosh. So just do that. I'm so sorry. <laughs> oh, got it. It's real life. Well, at least great minds are like, and it's it is very attracting and goes together, and it's very bright. So that's why I chose, it. especially on like your phone feed, like when you see yellow, 
that's what you see kind of first. It like stands out. Pops, definitely pops. Thanks for allowing me to use yellow and black. Uh, no problem. I don't have any rights to yellow and black. I'll work on it and then I'll piece it out to you. <laughs> You'll let me know. I, somebody's actually was flipping through like marketing um, videos and they did say like certain colors are owned and um, patented by companies. They are. It's kind yeah. of crazy. So yeah. that's, it's, it's kind of weird what you can patent and trademark. Like yeah. the fact that you can patent a color, a color because colors are just waves. Like visible light is all just a wave a length of wave like how are you able to 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 claim that the game that i'm working on patenting process is super super annoying and so one of the yeah. things that's that's trademarked is multipliers so when you play a game how sometimes you can get multipliers like 2x or 3x boosts 2x 3x is is patented like the, the x the multiplier 3x you can't do that in games or you'll get like sued or you have to owe the owe the money whoever owns like 2x patents on on little on just a little icon i just got introduced into the the world of patents patenting and such and it's uh i don't know how you can can patent like two words or colors, or colors or colors so speaking of being new to something you went to your first fashion show recently i was looking thank at you. that yeah thank you thank you for showing up yeah, yeah. Thanks for the invite. Like 15, 20 minutes from me. You know, I'd never been to a fashion show. Fashion has never really been a big thing of mine. When I moved out here, I never had time to really think about how I dressed or anything. I was just trying to like, just survive. So uh, we'd go to Goodwill and shop. And even still, I'm not like crazy fashionable. Mm -hmm. I try a little bit more. But it was really interesting, honestly. Like, it was kind of funny. The the breaks in between the, the walking were interesting. There was a girl that a couple girls that danced couple girls that rapped and sang. Mm -hmm. One girl from Kazakhstan did stand-up comedy, which was, it was funny, I laughed. <laughs> was it funny? I it was it funny. Funner. I wouldn't have done it. Yeah. And not because I'm not funny, which I might not be funny, but like, uh, I wouldn't have done stand-up comedy. That's one of the things that scares me more than like highlighting. So eventually I'm gonna have to do stand-up comedy because it scares me that much. Clothing that was being rocked was really cool, but the whole like runway walking and, and modeling was, was, uh, was all new to me. So I got to yeah. see like a whole bunch of new stuff. You got to introduce yourself into new things and new environments to yeah. be an all-rounded individual and so I love that you invited me and whenever you have another one you should invite me again if, for sure as long as I didn't embarrass you or no uh, you I, I love the support and I hope that you got to meet some people maybe bring on to the show and then you can yeah out. and and that's important that's what these days are about are being able to connect and socialize and get people who are interested in being a part of this kind of thing that show was a lot more art than you know it was like very artsy fashion and I got to win an award so it was nice to be able to have someone there to be able to witness that so thank you by the way yeah. I said have the award ready to go. I wanted to apologize. I know I took a lot of caffeine prior to um, being there Sunday and I was so talkative the entire show. I think yeah. we ran away everybody running that was like sitting like next to us because I wouldn't stop talking. Really I realized good. I was like, I was really talking, I'm never that talkative, but I had took a bunch of caffeine and I had a lot to say. And then we yeah. hadn't caught up in a while. So it was much. It, that was our catch up. So yeah. it was like nice to talk away and not really have anyone tell me to shut up. But I was so talkative, so I do apologize. Uh, it's all right. It's, it made it even better. You know, we got to catch up, chat, and then watch people rock some fits yeah i did get yelled at though i definitely pissed oh. off the camera people at, at this fashion show because your foot my foot was in the way and apparently it didn't match the theme they they <laughs> came up and they're like hey foot's in the way I'm like, dude sorry yeah i loved it i thought it was fun yeah it was not what i was used to right at some points i was laughing the thing that really makes me laugh and it kind of even irritates me in a way and it's not about fashion it's about rappers and performers yeah. like i don't get when you do lip syncing, they crank the vocals from the lip syncing. And I'm all down to hear it. I would love yeah. to hear it, but I didn't get to hear it. All I got to hear was like the fucking bass. Yeah. And I didn't get to hear, I didn't get to enjoy your performance because it was being like, it was super distracting having the vocals from you that I couldn't even hear. Like I want to be able to hear you perform. That was my only grievance, my only pet peeve. Was yeah. Like, uh, Some of the performances I just felt were like a hit or miss. That's funny. <laughs> Is there a height that you don't mess with with guys to be like if like a guy's eight. five seven yes if a guy's five seven does that guy stand a chance versus someone who's five three or like five ten or five really good question. For or do you have a hard line so like give me six six and that's it no okay so for me when i was 21 i think height was a big thing for me but as a grown woman i don't think height has anything to do with a person's personality and how they treat me and how they make me feel mm -hmm. for me it's they could be shorter than me they could be an absolute king and he protect me and he shows me respect mm -hmm. i don't care height has nothing to do with it do you particularly I really am attracted to tall guys. I don't know what it is. I found myself getting along and enjoying guys who are much shorter. I think they have a lot more personality. I don't know what it is. Maybe they're compensating for the height. I don't know. <laughs> you might be right. Like, yeah, maybe he's tall. I'm like, oh, he's like a supermodel. He's hot. Like, whatever. That makes sense. Yeah, that, yeah. that sounds about right. Yeah, most of the shorter guys I'm friends with are 
fun and comedic and I enjoy their company. I wanted to thank you one last thing for the fashion show for doing some camera work for me. I really appreciate it. It's good to be able to have people come out and support you and give you a, a helping hand when you don't have it. But, but that's what got me started in the whole space was filming. Started off as a filmer for the Reckless Ben channel and then filming for other creators as well kind of got me like a foot in the door. Take that even farther. So I think that's one of the best methods to get into the space. Figure out how to work a camera and then go film for someone. You're going to learn a lot. Everyone needs filmers. Everyone needs editors. That was really what got me in was like, I found myself in our video tending to be more the one behind the camera work, doing this crazy stuff for the video. But if it's not captured, then it didn't happen. We can't use it for the video. What's the point of doing it if we can't even capture it? I had to get good at filming, tried to become the best I could at filming, the best filmer. Mm -hmm. um, the filming is different than videography. There are two different things. Yeah. So I got really good at filming. I did a lot of like undercover filming and, and stuff. That's a really, really great way to get your foot in the door. If you're trying to join a channel, you're trying to get into the space of YouTube. Uh, if you don't feel comfortable in front of the camera, then get really comfortable behind the camera. Right, if you want to be involved in the space. Yes, it's yeah. one of the ways, it's a way that's worked for me and I've seen it work for others as well. For example, my friend who's a DJ, fantastic DJ. We live in a place where it's all about who you know, not what you know. He did the same technique that I did where he's like started going to these venues and would just film for the people. And he was like, hey, like I filmed your guys' set and I edited it up, here you go, what do you think? And they would love it. And so then they started inviting him back. Can you film again? Can you film again? Oh, we'll pay you. And then he would go, oh, instead of paying me, can can I just like play a set? And they'd be like, oh yeah, for sure. And then he played sets, got to show them that he kills it. And now like he films for them regularly and plays for them regularly, you know? And it all started with just him filming, being able to edit and film. So it's a really, really good method. That's so good. Yep, definitely just put your helping hand where you can. And then usually that's where the bullet snowball effect kind of comes in. Yeah, provide Provide some value for yeah. the, 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 P, the crew that you want to be become or the people you want to become. If you can provide them value, then that's like, uh, it's a good way. Right. So you were telling me the other day that there's this new AI optimized workflow and editing, whether or not AI is positive for content creators or negative for content creators. To answer the first question, we were talking about something called Autopod. So it's been out for a little bit and I stumbled okay. across it from TikTok videos. A video of an hour long podcast where they hit enter and it just started chopping the podcast. Yeah. The software is perfect for podcasts. So the footage into Premiere, you know, sync it up. You use Synchronize. For those of you who don't know this feature in Premiere, put all of your audio on different levels. Command A selects everything and then right click synchronize and it'll synchronize the wavelengths of all the audio together. Instead of trying to clap and sync things up like this. Yeah. It just does it for you. It's, it takes 30 seconds, but because people don't know how to use it, they like they do it the hard way. Once you sync everything up, you have everything ready to go and you can just use this software called Autopod. It automatically cuts to the person that's talking. And so while I'm talking, it'll be on me. When you talk, it'll just do it to you. So you don't even have to ed really edit it. It does it for you. It'll s turn an hour, two hour long podcast and edit in two minutes. Love that. We're trying out. In terms of the advancement of AI being a positive or negative to creators, it depends on what the creator is. You know, it's not like one or the other. It will be both depending on who you are. For me, it's the best thing ever. It makes my job easier. I write hundreds of trivia questions. And so I use chat GBT okay. a lot to help yeah. with it. It's amazing. Makes sense. It depends on the prompt that you provide it. Like the quality of answers depends on the quality of prompt. But for me, I love it so much. I also use uh, Adobe Audition, which is another podcast feature that enhances audio. So I do a lot of outside filming and for my audio, I just use voice memos on my phone. I throw it into Adobe Audition, it enhances it, and I do a 70% enhance, just a slide bar. If you go any more than 70%, it starts to kind of mess up the audio. So just leave it at 70% enhancement. It fixes so much, like it removes wind noise, it levels everything out, it makes your voice sound deeper. It's just like, and I don't have to do anything. Like I don't have, before I was having to do it all in post, all in like waveforms on Premiere and now I just drag and drop download. Wow. So for me, incredible. Yeah. For for other creators, it, it might take your job away. If you're yeah. the podcast editor for a podcast, like, oh, and that's true. all you do, you're probably gonna get replaced because yeah. unfortunately it's gonna do it faster and better than you, which is why right. like, if you're just editing a podcast, maybe also like, look to like filming it and running it. And it depends on what type of creator you are, right. whether it'll help you or hurt you. It might help you here and yeah. hurt you here. I don't really know how it's hurt me. The way it's gonna hurt me is it's gonna make it easier to produce, which means competition's gonna go up. Right. And probably a lot of people, there's gonna be more content that's better quality, which means you're gonna have to compete at a higher level. Yeah, I have an app that I use that I pay for 
and I was able to dub one of my shorts, and it was the short of me when I'm Malibu for slack Yeah. Germany is one of my biggest uh, viewers for my shorts. Came out really good. It's just a test trial, like post it, see, like when it, it wouldn't be on the same channel, and I'd probably have to do like a whole German engagement. Well, no level, I know like Mr. Beast does so uh, dubbing all the videos in every language and everything, but th that's like if you have a whole team doing that for you, I don't. Yeah, so that's interesting you brought that up because that was something that I was doing with the team as well. So yeah. I have hanging out in Espanol, hanging out in German, hanging out in Korean, and hanging out Hindi. Yeah. And so I was working with these two like college kids who were work training a voice model mm -hmm. to do that. And so the cool thing that they did, the business model they did was they reached out to me and they were like, yo, we want to offer you this service. We're going to create the pages for you, take the videos off of your channel and translate it all into these other languages. And the way we get paid is a percentage of the ad revenue based off of these new channels. Mm -hmm. So they're going to create new revenue streams and take a percentage of that. And I don't have to do anything. I'm like, dude, sign me up. Yeah. Especially now with the newer videos that I'm doing, it should be a lot easier to translate it. Yeah. So if someone wants to reach out and offer me that service, I will probably take you up on it. Well, you do mostly shorts, right? Well, my show is a shorts only channel. So the captions is the app. It's yeah. only $10 a month. It might be worth it for you. I'm so busy yeah. as it is. Like I'm a one man team. Yeah. I have people who help me rig. Yeah. Like in terms of editing and, and such like, like just I processing the videos into the app and everything. Yeah, like that would be so much extra work, which I'm yeah. not afraid to work. Like I need a team that expanding a team and I'm expanding it in terms of editors, but like it's something I can try out, but I'm gonna spend a lot of time yeah. trial and error. It's an option for time. sure to hire someone and you just show them quickly how to do it and then pay them to do it. Yeah. Because it, it's just oh, pushing you in that money. Yeah. Especially since your content is so um, so likable, I could see it being successful in other languages because yeah, people, really. people love to see that kind of thing. So yeah. I, I mean, it probably wouldn't take too much work. I'll try it out. Yeah, because if I can learn it, see if it works, and then I, yeah, you're right, just hire someone. One last thing before we get into some games. Okay. Do you have any advice for like up and coming creators? Anybody who wants to get into the creator space? It was a hard lesson learned. I'm not a big fan of pulling all nighters. You know, I don't really like doing that. Sometimes you gotta do it. Usually, all nighters of working result in like lower quality exports. Hearing from Hayden Hiller Smith which is a good editor that's in the creator now community said was that don't upload your first export your first draft and so if you're in a rush or you're pulling an all-nighter you know you're like your brain's starting to work yeah. less you're starting to like you're overlooking things you're not at your a game you're at your b c minus game and then you work all night to meet the deadline and then you upload something where you look back the next morning you're like ah oh, man like i could have done so much better i could have done this this that whatever i don't feel happy with what i did that kind of thing comes from just procrastination try to manage your time better so you don't end up procrastinating people might think they work better at the last minute you can perform better if you don't procrastinate it's a hard lesson that i learned i used to set up my videos and spend all this time filming one video i would spend one day to film one video really not sustainable for most people so i switched over to batches yesterday at a, a content house i'm a part of these content days where a bunch of creators come together and they they get a benefit off of all these other creators being around to film their videos and i did a, a 16 person trivia tournament and in one day i got 14 videos which is two weeks of videos in one day so now i can spend the next three days sitting at my computer editing where instead i could have spent one day filming one video and then edited and then post it and then filmed and then edited it and posted it and then filmed it you know what i mean mm -hmm. so like the batching process was the best thing i could have figured out i figured it out around like season two season three of the show and that was a game changer so if you're gonna find a way to get a week of videos five days of videos in one day of filming make you wildly more efficient. The way we were talking about this when you were filming the interviews at the, the fashion show. True. It's like, yeah, because you have it all set up. Yeah, because it's already know, you, All I have to do is leave. Got the energy going. Exactly. Yeah. You did the first one, you were like, oh, I, I was like off, I felt nervous. You know, you got to get the first one out of the way and then you can get into a flow state and then your quality goes up and you can just kind of, kind of run it out. So yeah, it gets easier. the bashing process is the best, I think. Right. For different channels, if you're doing a prank, you might spend all day to get the shot. And I've definitely been there and I know it's exhausting. I've had my friends punched in the face trying to do prank videos. Just different style of videos require different kinds of things, but if you can find a way to be more efficient and get more out of your squeeze as much as you can out of the shoot. That was the biggest thing for sure. Cause it's, I posted once a day, every day for over 500 days. So like consistency is key. And so you want to make it as easy as possible to stay consistent. I think that's great. You can have three or four people Mm -hmm. And then you spend the day filming three or four episodes. You're just like, wow, and I have so much to edit. 
And then you get to the next couple of days just editing. Right, or throwing an AI and it takes Whatever. Yeah. Much time. Yeah, true. We're going to play a game. We're going to play a couple of games. The first game is going to be a round of speak questions. Do I have to get these right? Questions right? No, these are just questions about you. It's not like a trivia. It's more just like, I'm going to ask you a question and you answer it as quickly as you can. The first thing that comes to your mind. One word answer? Um, Yeah, or just a quick Two sentence. Yeah. Speed round. Let's ready? go. I'm ready for speed and questions. Go. Okay. Your celebrity crush. Oh, wow. I don't really have a celebrity crush, but if I were to have one, it would be... Oh, I don't have one, Skip. Okay. Favorite sorry. vacation spot? I don't really go on vacation, but it would be... It would be Lions, Colorado. Okay, an ideal date for you? It ends with sunset. We kiss at sunset, yeah. because I love that. I love watching sunset. Okay, uh, biggest ick? Biggest ick? Yep. <laughs> That's the timer. You're never gonna know. Okay. No, go ahead. Let us know. I'm never gonna we know. No, no, no. That was the timer. Um, dude, I don't really. My biggest ick. Oh, oh, oh. Um, my biggest ick would be girls who get sloppy when they start drinking. Oh god. Good thing I don't drink. A pet name. Any pet name that comes to mind. My favorite or just anyone? Just any pet name. Big boy. Big boy. That's the name of a cat that always comes around our house. <laughs> That's so. The badass cat, dude. He's a gangster. A dream job. I have it. Game show. Oh, snap. Love that. We're going to play another game, okay. and it's called Who Are They? Wait, I feel like you have to play this. I should have questions for you. Yeah, maybe you should have. <laughs> All right. Who Are They is what it's called, okay? okay. I'm going to show you a sequence of a couple different YouTubers, and you have to tell me who they are. Ooh. Okay. Yeah. I hope I know them. Um, so I just have to know know these creators? Yep. Just, just know them. Can I skip if I don't? Yep. If you get all of them correct, uh -huh. right? and we get at least 5,000 views on this video and 100 likes, I will send you a free piece of merch. Ooh. Okay. Oh, so, so I, I need to win. So you need to win. All right, well, simple. Like it, go like the video right now, and uh, like I'm gonna do the rest and get this W. Yes. Oh, okay, ready? Girl, this is bad. I don't know. <laughs> so this is Jenna Marbles. I would've never got that. She's one of the first original YouTubers ever. I, I only got introduced into YouTube when I started filming with Ben like a couple years ago. I didn't watch YouTube. Okay, next. Is that Shane Dawson? No, the clothes. That's <laughs> Dream. And he actually wears like a mask. Yeah. The smiley face, but he revealed his face once before, and that's the face reveal. Oh. So he has recently gone back to using the mask and your Yeah. I think the anonymous account should stay anonymous. <laughs> like, don't reveal your face. Stop doing that. <laughs> right. That's okay. the whole like thing. <laughs> that's the whole point, right? Yeah. Okay. Like Banksy never revealed themselves. I think people do it because they just want to be known on the streets and like maybe acknowledge for who they are rather than their character they yeah, you're right. Definitely. But I'm gonna you're, get one. I of course, that's Logan Paul, of course. Yes. Okay, Logan Paul. He's one of those famous creators. Boxer now, right? Or WWE star. Still the same guy, Logan. Logan Paul, okay. <laughs> Just making sure we got this right, Jake. Yeah, you complained earlier about how it annoys you, so I refused to yes. Is it gonna be Logan again? I can just break it. It's Jake. Jake. That's his brother. Okay, that's his brother. Okay, so I'm glad you know the difference between the two. Of course, of yeah. Dude, I told you, Jake lost me a thousand dollars. I'm still mad at him. That's still Jake. It's still Jake, okay. <laughs> yes. Okay, so you know the difference, which is good. So one last one, I believe. There's one more. Is it gonna be you? That'd, That'd be pretty funny, funny right? Like, who's that? Oh, that's, uh, that's, the uh, what's his name's ex <laughs> That, right? That's, that's, what's his name? David Dobrik's ex-girlfriend. Ex David's ex, yeah. Do you know her name? Got this. <laughs> I do. Liza Koshy. Well, now we know I, I don't playing. watch any female creators, clearly. Yeah. Well, I'm sorry, guys, I let us down. I did not get all of them right. Game? No way. Play. Yes. This like, is I, so I want to rematch. I want to rematch. No way. Last time you slurped all in my ear and I'm just going to not focus. This is so funny. We we were all doing this, but we were just on the side of a mountain. Have you been practicing? Uh, no. <laughs> no. So you think without practice, you're going to be here first? I don't know. Last time I was a little distracted by you slurping in my ears. Yeah. <laughs> Literally. Okay. All right. Wait, so is this something that you're going to do every single yes. every single video? They can sponsor my videos. What is the name of this game? I, I might actually fruit. take this idea. This is a fruit by the Foot Challenge. Fruit by the Foot Challenge. Yeah. This is more than a foot. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, Michael Fortner versus Jessica is going to be competing. This is a rematch. Ready? Go. Oh, what? <laughs> ah, no! Too <laughs> easy. I thought I was winning. Player slipper <laughs> time. I seriously thought I was gonna win that. So close. Patch make perfect. You need, you need package more. Mm -hmm. Maybe. Boom, done. Don't all sticky now. But I love that. That's fun. That's but really you slurp good. a lot, which makes it really hard because then I start laughing and then I choke. Honestly, can I pitch 
bringing that as the very first thing. We've introduced the person and then three, two, one, go. Yeah. But if, if you try to do all the stuff, like that, you're pretty cool too. Right? No Dude, hands. That's like choke. No, I know. That's what I always just did. Yeah, that's a good idea. I'm going to do that. So funny when I first did it. Yeah. You found your thing. You need to do 10 more of those. I'm going to do it on every, on every one of my episodes. <laughs> for sure. We like games. You know, I prefer yeah. games yeah. and Slack or it's having fun. Talking's something. better. Talking is better Talking sometimes. You don't just talk it through. That's the most important thing, communication. Going in nature, watching the sunset, which is something I really enjoy doing too, and having those moments to smell the roses and to be able to just enjoy life for what is given to us. When we get lemons, we make lemonade, right? Something like that. Something yeah. like that. Something like that. Thank you so yes. much for joining today on anything and everything we did talk about a lot we talked about everything we did we talked a lot great pyramids Roman Empire. it's so funny i got that colors i was like being gypsy jake paul logan paul couches we did sarah is there one yeah, last yeah, thing you already did the outro we're done that was everything yeah that was on my notes the game and it's a wrap